Hello, my name is Daniel Bays, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about graphic organizers, and specifically about a particular graphic organizer called the frame. But before I do that, I'd like to say something about graphic organizers in general. Uh, graphic organizers are visual displays that uh, help you to see the relationships between ideas and concepts, and it usually involves uh, geometric shapes, lines, arrows, and um, Research has shown that graphic organizers are a very effective uh, tool for helping students to primarily to focus in on what is the most important information and also to see these uh, important relationships between ideas and concepts. Uh, some common graphic organizers that you know you might have run across either as a teacher or as a student are Venn diagrams, semantic and cognitive maps, um, webs, uh, tree diagrams, these are just a few. But particularly we're going to be focusing in on a graphic organizer called the frame. So now I'd like to talk about a specific graphic organizer called the frame. The frame was developed by Edwin Ellis in 1998 and it would be classified as a hierarchical graphic organizer which means that it shows the vertical relationships between concepts or ideas in much the same way that an outline would. But uh, what makes the frame unique is that in addition to showing the vertical relationships between ideas, it also shows the horizontal interrelationships between different ideas and concepts. So why don't we take a look at, a, at an example of the frame graphic organizer. As you can see, the uh, frame begins with a key topic there at the top. And then uh, below that is the is about statement, which just gives a uh, more of an explanation, a, sh a short explanation about the key topic. Then underneath that you have, in this case, three main ideas, but there can be more than three main, main ideas. There can also be less than that. The main ideas represent the what is the most important information related to the key topic. This is the most essential knowledge that you want the students to get. Then underneath each main idea, you also have spots for the essential details. And again, you might talk about a variety of different details related to the main idea, but here you would reserve these for the most essential details so that you can assure that your students are getting the, the most salient information on this particular topic. Uh, uh, below that you have the so what statement. So in other words, what's important to understand about this? Finally, uh, another feature of the frame is the, are these little circles you'll notice here next to the, the essential details. And this can be used for a in a variety of ways, but one way is that you could uh, let the students go back through here and organize these essential details in the order of most, uh, which is most important. Or you could, you could use these uh, circles to show the relationships between essential details to, by numbering them, and, and, and this way again you're building up that relational knowledge. In order to illustrate how the frame graphic organizer can be an effective teaching tool, I like to use the analogy of a jigsaw puzzle. Typically when a teacher is giving a lesson or a lecture, he has a key topic or a main topic that he wants to talk about, and in order to present that, that topic, he gives lots of pieces of information, and those pieces of information can be compared to pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. So at the end of a lecture, what you would have is a lot, a collection of pieces of information. And of course, each of these pieces of information do tell us something about the main, the main topic or the main idea. But the problem is, although they each tell you something, it's hard to see how they all fit together and how they're connected. So that makes it difficult to see the bigger picture. But when we put these pieces of information together into a frame graphic organizer, then something begins to take shape. Okay, so now all the pieces have been put together. Of course, I'm missing one piece, but anyway, don't let that distract you. So now what you have is all these pieces of information have been put together, and so that now we're able to see the big picture. For example, it's pretty clear now that the, the main idea, the key topic in this lesson, is this big pirate right here in the middle. And then uh, in addition to that, you have some, also some main ideas. For example, this, this treasure chest might represent a main idea, this fellow pirate, or maybe this big ship here. And then in addition to that, you have a number of essential details that you would also want to take note of, like a palm tree, a bird, this 
skull down here. So this is just kind of an illustration of how the frame graphic organizer can take a typical lecture and present it in a way to where it, the information presented is much more meaningful and also much better related so that you're able to get the big picture. Probably the best characteristic about the frame is its versatility. You know, the frame can be used by teachers and it can be used by students. We've already talked about how a teacher can use the frame to uh, supplement a lesson or a lecture, and um, all, but also students can use the frame for their in, for their own independent work in the classroom. For example, they can use it for note taking, for more organized note taking. They can use it as a kind of a study guide and organizer for their reading assignments or studying their textbooks, and also they can use the frame for even their for their pre writing for compositions, different papers that they need to write. It's a great way to organize your writing before you get started. So uh, maybe we can take a look at a few practical applications for how the frame can help students in these particular areas. Another way that you can use the frame graphic organizer is that you can use it as a reading comprehension tool. For example, in studying your textbook, you can you can use the frame to better organize the material that's presented in a chapter that you're given as a reading assignment. For example, in this case, David is studying about the different Greek city-states, and he, you know, the Greek city-states would be the key topic, and for his different main ideas, he can fill in some of the various Greek, influential Greek city-states, such as Sparta or Athens, and then under each of those city-states, he could, he could uh, briefly list some of the essential details related to those city-states. So essentially what he's doing is he's taking all the essential information from this chapter, this assigned chapter, and he's um, putting it into a frame. And this is quite useful because later on he can refer to it as you can use the frame as a study guide, and in a, in a glance he can get all the main key points, the essential knowledge from this particular chapter. Finally, another way in which the frame graphic organizer can be used as a learning strategy and tool is in writing and improving your writing skills. For example, here Ed is using his frame as a pre-writing tool or a think sheet to plan a composition that he's uh, a, a, a persuasive paper that he's writing. And on uh, his particular topic he's writing on is a um, whether or not school uniform should be used in school. And he's taking the side of being for the use of school uniforms. And uh, you know, he's able, what he's able to do with the frame is he has this topic, which, is, which would go in the key topic spot, and then underneath that he's able to use each main idea for his, his body paragraphs. So each main idea would represent one of his body paragraphs, and finally he, he can write a good conclusion in the so what box. So let's see what Ed produces. You see here his persuasive paper topic is school uniforms. The position that he has decided to take is that school uniforms should be mandatory in all schools. Then he has broken up his paper into three main body paragraphs. Body paragraph one will deal with the fact that um, school uniforms would eliminate clothing as a status symbol. Body paragraph two, school uniforms would eliminate the need for tedious dress code rules. In body paragraph three, school uniforms would encourage positive behavior. Under each body paragraph, he has supporting statements, which he would use to back up his main idea in the paragraph. For example, in eliminating clothing as a status symbol, he said that it wouldn't be so noticeable which kids have money and which don't. Also, gang members would not be able to use clothing to identify themselves. Supporting statements for body paragraph two on eliminating the need for tedious dress code rules. He writes, it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be the need to make dress code rules regarding modesty. There wouldn't be the need to have rules regarding inappropriate logos or advertisements on clothing. So this is, some exam this is just a few examples of how you can use the frame to, as a great pre-writing tool before you write a composition. So now that Ed has completed his frame, he's ready to get started writing his paper, but actually the, the structure of the paper has already been written. Now all Ed has to do is just flesh, flesh it out a little bit, add some supporting details to his body paragraphs, which he's already outlined in his frame, 
and he's ready to go. So the frame is, a, is quite a useful tool in your pre-writing. So this brings us to the end of our presentation on the frame graphic organizer. I hope that some of this information could be something that you could use, whether you're a teacher or a student. And I thank you for your time and hope you have a nice day.